everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this double shaker card. Now I've made mine in the, in the shape of a circle. You can do any shape you want. But basically what I've got is the centre bit here is all these sequins and then the outer part has these little fairies. So you've got two different you know, shaker parts in there but they're not mixing up and I think it looks really, really pretty. Very straightforward to do. Like I said, you can do any shape you want in any size, so it is really, it is very simple to you know change it up however you want it. Then inside here I've got the same papers. This is from, all from the Fairy Tales collection by Dovecraft, and I've done some heat embossing. I've got a little straight part there, that's to basically just land the card so that it does stand upright and doesn't roll. If you were to keep it all completely circular, it possibly will stay, but it's just handy just to have that at the back so it just doesn't, yeah, just kind of roll off <laughs> and disappear. All of the beautiful embellishments are all from the collection. I've used the little wand there. If you have missed my music box that I've done, I'll link it in up here. I'll also link in the unboxing, which shows all of this collection. There's the butterflies there, the little paper flowers. I've added that bow. So this one is very, very girly. It would look lovely with a big number here. Imagine like 21st birthday. It just, yeah, it's just really, really special. I do love this one. Now this is eight by eight. I had these huge eight by eight cards lying around. I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna do a really large card. In the UK, we do like large cards. You go into the card shops and we have huge, <laughs> some of them are massive. And I know my sister's always a bit competitive and she always likes to get bigger cards than me. So yeah, that, I think that's why I like doing five by seven and six by six cards. I do like a large card. And I think when you've got all these beautiful things, especially in this particular collection, you want the space to be able to show them all off and yeah I know postage means it's a little bit more but generally I do hand deliver my cards but this is easy to downsize so any size five it needs to be square so five by five six by six seven by seven that will work um, and obviously you can go down to four by four if you wanted to do a really really dinky one so that's what we're going to make so I am going to do another eight by eight style so this is the paper pack these are all the bits I've already prepared. This is the huge envelopes. I can't remember where these were from, but I want to say very old Dovecraft. I've got a feeling it may well be. I'll, I'll link in 8x8 cards anyway. These are a really nice like cream colour. Um, so yeah, I had a few of them lying around. So this is the 8x8 card. Now you want to have whatever card base you've got. You want when we do our cutting, you want to make sure that your fold line is at the top. So it's a it's a top folding card. You want it in that orientation. So if you've got a pre-cut six by six card bases, that'd probably be the most common one. And I have done six by six circle cards before, but I think they were easel ones that I've done. So I've pulled out some paper there. This is another nice, love this style. And it's that one there on the pad. And again, I'll just lift up that kind of overview page there just so you can see all the beautiful little prints that are there so that's what we're using so first of all i'm using this wonderful tool which many of you who've been following me for some time now will know how much i love the x cut tool so i've got this one but also the cutting system that some of you have got which is a, i think it's a a six inch and then an eight inch circle and then it's got seven inches on one side and then it's also got five on another one on the smaller one until you see it you'd understand but that would work for this obviously and along with this one but if you've just got a dinner plate or a side plate something like that would work as well so here is my like I said card base top folding and you just want to maximize as much of the card as possible without going off the edges apart from the top you do want to go over just enough so that you've got that join so at the top here this is this score line here so you need to have a little bit, I've got about two inches there to keep the card attached, okay? So with that in mind, I'm gonna set my dial here and I'm gonna move it up to seven and a half. Okay, so those of you who've got it, I found the seven and a half worked just right for this one. You can go closer to eight if you want, but I just found that that one worked fine for me. Now, if you push it down or lift it up, if you so have it so it's upright, so it's lifted off, you can just go around and what you want to do is make sure there's a blade just under here. The blade wants to come up so it's going to cut off this bit here, which I'm just feeling there. So that is, and then you just want to go around. You want to make sure you don't go over this side and you don't go over this side here. But you want to go off up here just slightly and you can feel, I can feel how much that's going to come off. 
Once I'm happy where it is, just push it down so it's completely flat. Put your finger in the middle here and you really want to kind of hold. I'm going to go this way. Make sure you've got nothing catching you. Let's just pop that out of the way as you go around. And you need to keep everything in place. Do not move it. I am cutting through two pieces of, of good quality cardstock, so it is a bit more challenging. And I'm just going to go around and just make sure that I've cut through both of those. You can feel when it's cut away. There we go. Now keep it in place. Don't move it at this point here. Um, am I at the right? No, no, no. It's fine. You can take it away. <laughs> you can remove it. So now, can you see, I've still got this bit and that's the join. So now we've got this perfect circular card. Now, open it up. And if you line up this flat side with a, if you've got grid paper or just against the ruler, you want to make sure that it's, you've got it completely straight. So now I'm going to open it up and I can see it's obviously running through there. And you want to take just a little bit off the bottom of the inside. And like I said, that's just going to ground the card and stop it from rolling. So I'm going to make sure that my ruler's all... I'm using the grids under here just to make sure. And I'm only taking off, you know, it's even like a sixteenth, a couple of millimetres. It's, it's minimal because you'd be surprised once you've removed that, it will stop that circle rolling away okay and it's you know it's not too much that it's going to kind of impact the design or anything so now when I stand that up it stands there perfectly you can see it's kind of rocking a bit I think I've got a bit of yeah my pads a little bit warped but it will stop there we go <laughs> all right so that's what you want so that's that card base all prepped now with this still set at the same size or if you're using a dinner plate anything you're using you want to use that same thing again and you want to cut out some patterned paper so something of your choice I'm going for something that's not too detailed so you can see the one behind here is this lovely pearlized it's got a slight pattern you can just make it out there because you've got so much going on on top if you've got too much of a busy background you won't really appreciate all the lovely elements that we're going to add to it so I thought this one here is still quite plain in a sense that it's not going to affect what I'm putting on top of it so again I'm just checking I'm not pushing down on that blade, just checking that it's all where I want it to be. So now I'm going to push down, and this is just one sheet of paper, so this cuts like a dream. So that's that piece now. Okay, and then that is now going to sit over the top. So whether you're using six by six, whatever you're doing now, your pattern piece will sit perfectly on whatever size it is you're doing. So that's why I like doing these cards when there's no real set measurements because it doesn't matter what you use. You could have a huge dinner plate size. Can you imagine how great that would look? It'd be lovely. So that's that piece now already. So you can probably start to see how it's developing. Then you want to grab another bit of card. So this is one, one kind of side of one of those um, 8x8 cards. And this is what I'm now going to use to make my frame. So with that still in the same setting and whether you're using a dinner plate or anything else you want to cut out another size again I'm just sticking with the same colors but there's it doesn't matter if you choose to have this you know any colors you want it really doesn't matter so but this is what we're making now is this frame on the top now the easiest way to do this and this is the I guess the most challenging part of the card pop this in the middle again you want to make sure that it's and obviously cover yep so I'm going to go around cut this out okay now this is when you don't want to move um, this tool if you're using this tool don't move it now if you're using a plate lift it off that's fine what you want to do next is find something a smaller plate that is going to come down and give you I mean you don't want to go any smaller than what I've got there and that's about a half an inch frame so whatever plate you bring in next you might even use a die and draw around a die you want to have so that you've got about half an inch or more overhanging but I wouldn't go any less so what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to bring this down whilst holding this in place I'm just unscrewing my dial and I'm going to bring it down half an inch no I'm actually coming down it wasn't as much in the end was it let me yeah, so I'm bringing it down now so it is, so mine's on, I'm just popping mine down now to just over six and a half. But again, it's entirely up to you, but I wouldn't go any shorter than half an inch. So 
Now I'm just tightening that up and I've pushed the blade down while I was doing that and I haven't moved this. Now the reason you don't want to move this is because this is in the exact centre of this circle and in order for us to get a nice frame, you need to have that in the centre. So if you've got a plate, it'd be easy for you to move that around and you just want to make sure that you've got that frame all the way around. So now I can cut. Don't want the card to move, you want to keep everything really in place. like so and it should join perfectly and now I have a perfect frame okay keep this this would come in handy you may want to use it to decorate inside I've just used that paper there but yeah you could put, add some nice colors to it and use it on other cards it's a nice strong card anyway so that is now the frame done we've got our pattern paper that sits perfectly on top of this the inside piece I think it's just now at this measurement again so the smaller plate and I just cut the same decorative paper and then that's just from Anesta dies and I just heat emboss my sentiments so that's all ready to stick inside in a moment with this piece now here and with that still no what you want to do now is go back to the original size yeah so back up but just if you can come slightly under even if you're using a plate don't worry just cut it to the same original larger size with this I'm coming just under seven and a half because we're going to add the acetate sheet and you want that to just kind of come slightly under here otherwise it may hang out but what I would say is if you're cutting it exactly the same size which you would then go around with a pair of scissors I'll show you in a minute and cut that out but basically I'm just going to grab my acetate here now I have mixed the crafters companion acetate with acetate from UK car crafts it's 140 microns so I'm not sure which one it is I'm using I think the reason I've done it is because they were pretty much the same so yeah just have a nice it doesn't matter if it's a, a really flimsy one it doesn't have to be a particularly strong acetate because it's only acting as a little screen so with my original size so the size that I cut this piece out with that's what you want to kind of be cutting with now but if you're using this just drop it down a little bit under that just so you don't get any overhang and again you want to go around and the nice thing about this machine is it does cut through lots and lots of different materials so you can see you know I've done obviously paper card acetate um, I've tried thicker thicker cards so like you know coming up to a chipboard kind of um, size but you want to obviously be careful there that you're not going to blunt your blade so and you can buy replacements as well so now I've just cut my acetate now if you've just cut it with your dinner plate that's the same size one that you used for this you just want to go around the edge now and just take a very thin amount all the way around and it just means you won't get anything overhanging because what's going to happen is, is this frame is going to stick over the front of our acetate there so with this piece and some double-sided tape okay I've just got this quarter inch red tape and you just want to go along and just pop it through the middle and twist it around doesn't matter if the top plastic coating is buckling because you're going to pull that off anyway so just kind of manipulate it around trying to keep it kind of in the middle really you don't want any of your tape oozing over the sides you can use a wet glue but the problem is you're sticking a plastic to obviously glue so it, it can take a long time but um, the red tape is obviously I just find very very good for sticking to acetate so I'm just going to start another one there like so again just making sure there's no air bubbles be careful you don't want to obviously crease your frame there we go and then I can just take off the release paper okay and then with your acetate sheet you want to as neatly as possible stick it over and then just kind of let it fall down if you've gone slightly off on one side to the other side just carefully turn it over this way and just go along and just trim it but basically you just you don't want to see any of the acetate hanging over and again do go over it like this and get any air bubbles out because you don't want you might be adding maybe finer like glitters or little kind of beads in your shaker you don't want any gaps where they might get out so now that's completely secure got something in there a bit of card I think but now that is our frame already next we're going to add the foam 
so I always like to use, you can use Fun Foam, I've done it with Fun Foam and I've got tutorials up where you can use Fun Foam sheets and cut them and use them as your kind of dimension, your lifted part here. So you see all inside here is white foam between those two layers there. The inexpensive way that I do it is, this is my foam, very cheap, pound from the pound shops or the range, and then I undo it and run a strip. I'll do this one next to it because I could do with another one for something else I'm doing. So there we go. Stick them down and you can see this one here I've already cut. And the reason I do this is so that now I can cut as thin as strips as I want. So I know I want to have something that's going to sit around there and again I don't want you to see it hanging out any other side. So I'm cutting about a quarter inch strip. Now you can buy these on rolls for shaker cards but personally I think they're very expensive you never get a lot and I just think it's a waste of money so <laughs> I think that is so much better to do and like I said these rolls last ages and you can get you know I could probably cut three of those strips yeah you can see I can get another two out of that and that's probably the kind of width I always use when I do shaker cards so and if I make any other styles I just use normal square foam adhesive little pads so then I just keep the the release paper underneath my finger there with my thumb and as I go around again just manipulating it to curve around the frame shape and I'm pulling the backing paper off as I'm going around this is just so quick and that's why I like it with the foam yep it's another great one it's just a little bit more fiddlier it does take up a little bit of time and you have to you can buy the pre the fun foam ones you can buy double-sided fun foam if you've got fun foam yourself then you can apply double-sided sticky sheets to it and then die cut or cut the shape out but because of the size I'm doing I find this has just always been my go-to I've done this for a long time and then this one here I'm going to use this other quarter inch and this is just wax paper or we call it grease proof paper whatever the one is that's shiny because obviously you don't want this to actually stick to it you want it to be able to come off and then just continue that and if you do start a new one like I have make sure you get the join right up to the other one and then as you come around to here you want them to join again and when you cut it make sure you cut it so your scissors are over the grease proof paper don't go under otherwise you're going to get them all sticky if you cut it over look my scissors are perfect these are just um I picked them up the other day from Ikea for 50p and you know they're really just good because what I was finding is I was picking up my nice ones for glues and stuff whereas now I've got these ones for 50p but they're actually really comfortable and really nice in your hand and they're yellow so they match my room so anyway so now I'm just going to go around just make sure that's all stuck down next we're going to create our frame for the inside this is to have this two shaker part element to it now if you don't want to do that then don't then you can keep this as one great big shaker so don't feel you have to do this if you're new to shaker cards putting two in you know it does take patience and time and precision and all that kind of stuff so just see watch my tutorial see how I do it and then you can decide but basically I've got this outer frame and I've got this as an X cut one this is a I can't remember where I got this one from anyway this sits perfectly inside and when I run that through my die machine I'm using that scrap piece here when I run it through that is the frame that I get and it is perfect and I've used it on a few different shaker things so I'm going to go and run this one through okay so I've just run that through my die machine and you can see now there I've got a lovely frame so pop all that to one side what I'm going to do with this piece is again with my red tape that's why the quarter inch red tape I go to this a lot you've probably seen this featured a lot in my um, tutorials I just really like the size of it it's great for doing you know all these little things which at first I didn't think I really done a lot of but then since having it and I buy these from every crafts a pound you get 23 rolls for 10 pound and you get all different sizes but you get a lot of the smaller size and I have been buying them oh, just drop on the floor I've been buying them from them now for well over a year and they've lasted me ages so yeah that's where I get my red tape and you get nice big rolls as well so make sure that's all stuck down and then this is going to 
stick on top of our acetate. So at first this is just purely decorative. It's not until we do the bit underneath. So grab your acetate frame here and then you just want to stick it as centered as possible. So I'm just looking in my screen. I think that's about right. If it's a little bit off by the time we decorate it, I'm not too worried, but you're sticking it on the top. Okay, like so. Now flip it over and you're gonna add this backing just over the top. So exactly the same way. And this is why I like cutting my backing down as well because I can cut it, this is just gonna work. But you can cut it so that obviously it's really, really thin. And it basically just is acting as a little wall to stop the sequins kind of, you know, sorry, I'm just concentrating, um, the sequins going into the other section. So just push that one around and I just need a little bit extra. And again, like I said before, when you're continuing on from another one, just make sure you butt it right up. And don't worry if it starts lifting and, like I said, buckling and stuff, because as soon as you take the release paper off the top, it will flatten out. Again, keep that backing down and then snip, like so. Push that all down. Okay. So now it's time to fill it up. Now, usually what I do is let's stick... Let's prep this bit first. So this decorative piece here, you want to stick right over. It's quite a big area. I don't want to put just all glue on it. So I'm going to run double sided tape. Plus this is going to be held down by the time we put the shaker frame over the top. And then what I'll do is just pop some wet glue. More so around the edge there. I'm just putting a very thin amount just on those parts where the tape hasn't reached. You just don't want any of it lifting inside really when you because once you've stuck everything down that's it <laughs> there's no getting back in it into it so just make sure my pattern's nice and straight and like I said that should stick perfectly over the top like so okay so now if you're not adding this piece here I would say tip whatever shaker bits you want onto this okay and kind of spread it out a bit you may want to have your message so see this is a topper that's stuck on the acetate you might want to stamp emboss or stamp something and stick it stick that down on here first and then sprinkle your shaker bits over the top so that when the person shakes it it reveals the message so if you do want to do that then do that all now because I'm doing the two parts here, making life a bit difficult for me, I'm going to be tipping into this. And because this is round, I'm going to stick this directly over the top because it's so easy to line up. OK, so there are a couple of ways to do it. And I will link in all my other shaker cards up here because there's lots of other like kind of hints and tips along the way. So I'm using these clear ones. Again, I picked these up from the range. I think they're a pound fifty. They used to be a pound years ago. Always a pound. I used to get loads and loads. Now everything seems to be increasing just by 50p or a pound. Um, so yeah, I'm making them last a bit longer. So you just want to put enough in there that when it's spread out, you don't want it to be bulkier than the height of your foam. Otherwise it's gonna you know, just look a bit odd. So I think that's enough there. So that's those. And then for this bit here are these gorgeous fairies. And again, I did share them closer up. Can you see, you can just make out all the detail on her. And it is, it's Tinkerbell. So you just want to go around if you've got these. And I'm just kind of spreading them out. And some of them get a bit stuck. So some of like her foot or her, her wing kind of gets caught in the foam. But that's actually quite nice because it kind of just, you can see there. Some of them fall down, but they're all kind of stuck around. I just think it's nice that you can really see them all. So... Yeah, just to try not, obviously, to get them falling into the other bit. Because I know a lot of people have got a love-hate relationship with shaker cards. My mum has a love-hate relationship because they are one of those things that if you get it wrong when you've gone to stick it down or you're slightly off, if you pick it up and start, you know, knocking it, that's it. Everything was gone all over the place. And I've had it before and... You know, I've had sequins stuck on this once I've opened them, you know, want to stick it down and stuff. And it is, it's heartbreaking. So, yeah, 
there is a process to it but if you start to do them a lot which I now have done you find what kind of works and yeah I don't mind doing them anymore so you can see there that one's got a bit of static on it because she doesn't want to stay where she should that one's a little bit stuck there I think that's enough okay so I've got them all laid out where I need to then what you want to do is try and not nut like this is what I mean don't knock it now or anything like that just carefully I'm really kind of pushing it down with my left hand there so that I can pick this all off without really moving it so I'm just going to carefully see even like that that could have been disastrous you just try not to move it too much because I've got a few stops and starts there with my tape I just need to do it a few times right so that's that one all removed and then I just need to take the backing off very carefully in the centre here that's why it's good to use a pokey tool as well because you can kind of extend it right over and do make sure you've taken all the backing off because believe it or not I've done it before as well where like there you could hardly see that that's still our backing on and if you go to stick it all down and realise then that bit's not stuck and you've put beads in or something they all fall out <laughs> so again now at this point make sure nothing has gone and jumped up onto the top of the foam because again that would stop it sticking to what you're putting on top so now you want to get your base now because I'm working with a circle and I've got no wording or anything on it I can just stick this on top now and it doesn't matter all I need to focus on is that it's completely married up I've just pop my head right over the top just to make sure that I am bang on and now I'm just going to push that down like so I've got some hot glue on the back of that which is a bit annoying but never mind and then just make sure that everything is stuck down when we turn it over there we go look at that and they just look great. I've got a random, don't you hate that? See, this is, I've got a random, you see that little, this has happened before, it was on the unicorn shaker card I made and there was a little like rogue, different coloured sequin. There's a little dot there from a bright pink that's made its way in, but yeah, it should, it should kind of disappear or stick to the side eventually. But look at that now. And then if I open up my card, it stands up perfectly. So now you just want to decorate so you can see what I've done here I'm going to stick that inside in a moment so I've got the the topper pack here so I've already used a couple and I'm going to use this yellow because it is perfect and matches so this is when you want to make sure your card is up the right way so that line that we kind of cut here if you line that up with your grid underneath you know now that your cards in the upright position and then I can stick that about centre yeah like so I mean already just by adding that it just looks really pretty there's so much of this collection I'm gonna have to already buy extras off because I've only got two of them left and these are really lovely toppers the paper flowers are nearly gone my butterflies are nearly gone there's so much yeah nearly finished with so now I'm going to decorate it and speed up the video and um, yeah just enjoy it So there you go guys, how gorgeous is that? And you can make it any size you want. So I appreciate people that don't want to make really large, you know, circle cards, you can obviously drop these down and it will be the same process if you're using squares, rectangles, ovals. It's the same concept to what I've done. You just always need to make sure that you've left this little bit here attached so that you can obviously keep it as a top folding card, but they both stand up perfectly. 
and I think they look absolutely gorgeous. Love all the different elements to it. I love that there's two different kind of shaking parts to it, but you don't have to add that piece. You could just stick the frame on and still have this all kind of set in the centre, but you could just have, if you've got these fairies or just sequins all over, it would still look lovely. But yeah, hopefully you've picked up lots of little tips along the way and if you're new to my channel and you've never made a shaker card then do look at the playlist because I've got more basic styles there so maybe to start off with and then kind of you know build up that way um, but yeah that's it so I hope you've enjoyed it do share anything you make over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page many of you do and it is really appreciated because we are all enjoying seeing them so until next time if you've enjoyed today please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye